everyone, welcome back to Sprint GP. My name is Julia Robinson, and today we're gonna to be diving into the genetic makeup of the Sprint GP racers. So this genetic platform is applicable to both motorcycle and open wheel racers. So whether you hold a motorcycle racer, an open wheel racer, this is gonna be important for you to better understand the properties and traits. Whether you own a racer, you're looking to purchase one, or you're interested in the lending program that Sprint GP is gonna be releasing soon. So we're gonna start with looking at the OpenSea Marketplace where you can find the Sprint GP collection. And then we're gonna dive into the Sprint GP website one more time to go through that profile section. As you're entering races, this is gonna help you strategically choose races depending on the data behind your racer. So let's get started with the OpenSea Marketplace. All right, so if you head on over to the OpenSea Marketplace here in the search, type in Sprint GP, it's already here as it is one of my more frequently visited collections. And here you have all of the Sprint GP NFTs that are currently minted and put on the OpenSea Marketplace. Now, today we are gonna be filtering by buy now as if we are gonna go look for one that we would like to purchase. Now, here you see all of these different things that you can filter by on OpenSea. So these fall under the properties for every single racer. Today, we're gonna be identifying what caliber means why is color important? What does design mean? Genotype, pedigree, race number, and of course the sport. So we have both open wheel and motorcycles on this collection. Now, everything we're gonna cover today is on the Sprint GP website. So if you're on the Sprint GP website, you can head on over to the learn tab. There's quite a bit of information here. Go to guidelines and who is your racer? This is really the properties that you see on OpenSea. And this is gonna help you determine which racer is best for you. So let's start with the basis, pedigree. This was one of the properties listed on OpenSea. Pedigree really refers to the competitiveness of the data behind your racer. Now remember, all, all of the Sprint GP NFTs are tied to ground truth. They have real race data behind them. So the pedigree is really looking at how competitive that data is. With that said, you have to remember that in Sprint GP, you are not only an owner, but you're a coach. So if you buy maybe a lower tier racer, so maybe a Venor, which is gonna be the lower end of data, that is going to maybe reduce the price, but that doesn't mean you don't have a competitive racer because in Sprint GP, you're a coach. If you strategically enter your racers and you improve your trajectory, that is gonna reward the simulation results. And that is ultimately gonna push your racer and you're gonna start climbing class levels. So similar to trading, you wanna buy low, sell high if you're looking to be a strategic coach in this environment. So pedigree competitiveness, and victim is gonna be the top tier. These are gonna really have the highest class data behind them. They're gonna be you know, from ground zero from when they're minted, perhaps the more competitive ones. With that said, I could take an Invictum, I could throw them in the deep end, not be paying attention to the races I'm entering and ultimately hurt my trajectory, which will hurt my racer's performance. That Invictum will become less valuable given the data because I have unfortunately tainted that data a little bit. So this is really what the pedigree reflects. Invictum, Volant, Solaire, Venor. This is the range of data. Top tier racers are gonna be minted as in victims going down to Volant, Solaire, Venor. Now, these are all still very competitive racers. The data behind them are very strong, but it depends who the creator clones are of where your data comes from, okay? So when the racers go through a cloning process, their data gets diluted depending on who they are cloned with. That is what this chart reflects, okay? so. If we're over on the Sprint GP collection, we wanna go over to pedigree. I wanna see if there's any Invictum available. We can see that there is one NFT on OpenSea that is an Invictum. There's only one, it's already owned, it's not for sale. That's okay. If we go back to buy now, maybe we're gonna not do Invictum, but we'll do Volant because we can see that there are nine here. Now, there's only two for sale though. They're both open wheel cars and I wanna pull up this one because this one is beautiful. We have a really cool design here. We're gonna get into design in a minute, but we know that this one actually has pretty competitive data. Now, if we go down to the properties here, we see that it has the pedigree of Volant, boom second tier data. That is a very good sign. What else do we see? That it is an Aurum for the caliber. So 
From pedigree, which is the competitiveness of the data, we go to caliber, which is the purity of the data. Now, like I said, these NFTs are all tied to ground truth. They have real race data behind them. Aurum is gonna be the most pure data. That means that it has less cloned athletes to make this NFT. As we go down from Aurum to Dux, Velox, Fulminaire, Ignis, Invenir, that just means that the data is getting a little bit more diluted and that more athletes have been cloned together and that the sample data is pulling from more athletes. Okay, so it's a little bit more of a diverse data set in regards to where it's coming from. It doesn't mean it's less competitive. It just means that it's less pure and it's going to be pulling from more data. So Aurum, though, is going to be the most rare because there is only 190 Aurums. So Aurums are going to be the most rare. Then we have Ducks and Velox just going down. This represents the cloning system. So you can see what happens when two specific clones are joined together. So caliber, purity, it's not going to necessarily be the competitiveness. It's more just how many racers were cloned together to get to yours. Here, we have that Aurum though. So this is a very pure racer and it has very competitive data. I want this racer. This one is very appealing to me. Okay, genotype. Um, that has a genotype of three. Genotype is just the distance from the ancestor, similar to how all of us have a genotype. Okay, so putting a little bit more reality into the racing ecosystem. This does not reflect competitiveness. It just, again, reflects how far away you are from your ancestors. As we get into race number, this does by no means reflect competitiveness. This is just another identifier number 893, this is directly influenced by the creator clones and what their race numbers were. As we go into color and design, here we have Bluebell as the color, Vapor as design. Now, one really interesting thing about the Orums is that they are all either animated or ombre, which means it's a color gradient. So here, whoops, if we go back here, we see that we have filtered um, by we filtered by pedigree and so we are on volant it just so happens that both of these racers as you can see here are both also aurum so this one as you can see is a gradient from purple to black and the last nft we were on was a really beautiful blue smoke so the aurums Again, they are either animated or they are color gradient. This is a rarity factor. This does not influence performance, but if you're a collector, you're looking at these more of a piece of art rather than a racing tool, this might be a really important factor for you. Also, they're just beautiful. Not to say that the solid ones are not beautiful as well. Sprint GP did a really great job with the colors they chose, but this is just an identifier again about the caliber, okay? So just another way to identify Orums is that unique design. If you're on the learn page, you can see here also the rarity in regards to color. And so it goes from animated all the way to red. So out of the total population, 20% are gonna be red, 17% orange, all the way down to 3% black, okay? So maybe you don't wanna spring for an Aurum, that's okay. Maybe there's an available black, gold, platinum, or even turquoise. Those are still very valuable. There's gonna be less of them in the ecosystem. It automatically makes them a bit more rare. So perhaps you find a lower tier in regards to pedigree, which is the level of competitiveness, but maybe it's a turquoise. That automatically is gonna make that NFT a bit more valuable in the ecosystem because there's less of them. So let's make sure that we covered everything. Caliber, this is gonna be that purity of data. We have color and design, which can reflect the rarity. Our genotype is distance from ancestors. Our pedigree is really that raw competitive starting level for the NFT. Again, competitiveness, this is as minted. Users have a big influence on the competitiveness of their racer though, depending on how strategically they enter. Race number, this is a direct correlation to the creator clones. And then sport, you're either open wheel or your motorcycle. So that's pretty straightforward as well. These tools should help you as you are looking at the different available um, NFTs on OpenSea. So if we go to all the ones that are buy now, these are all buy now. See here, we have a gold one. Gold is a more rare color. And if we go down and look at it, okay, gold, pulmonaire, the caliber is gonna be at the lower tier and the pedigree, which is our competitive data is Venor, which again is gonna be lower. This does not mean this isn't a competitive racer though, because you can turn this into one depending on how strategically you enter races. 
Now, all of your NFTs information, while it's on OpenSea, it is also in a profile section. So here I have one racer, Sir Charles. He's a B-class racer. If we go over here, we can see the pedigree, we can see the genotype, the caliber, as well as some other information. So pedigree, which again, the competitiveness is Solaire. And if we go back to the learn section, you will see that this is like, you know, well, maybe the lower end, but it's still competitive. And I've actually done a pretty strategic job and I've been able to increase the performance of this racer. All of these can also be found within deeper of the profile section. So if you go to your racer, you go to more details here, you can see um, all of that information, the properties that we just covered, but then also just like your race performance. Last time um, we went into the profile section on our last tutorial, we talked a little bit about the traits behind every racer. So while your racer has a genetic makeup, there is also really important performance indexes that we provide around these racers. So we're gonna start with the top consistency. Again, we covered this in the last video. So if you watch this, I'm sorry if it's a little repetitive. Consistency is gonna be your ability to match your sector and lap times one after another. This is a neutral trait for Sir Charles, which means consistency is not the strongest, it's not the weakest, but theoretically he should do well in races that have a higher number of laps because maybe if my consistency was recessive, I'm not good at matching my lap times, I would wanna do sprint races. But because this is a neutral trait, I'm gonna be entering this racer in races that have you know, probably more between like three and seven laps because I know that he can match those um, those uh, sector and lap times. Okay, next we have deterioration. This is a recessive trait for me, which means maybe my tire management is not the best. And that means that as the race goes on, the data that is being used for my racer, it shows that tire management is not the best I start to fall behind in my lap times. I'm not improving my lap times or sector times, not necessarily dropping significantly, but I'm not really pushing forward. This tells me that I'm probably gonna wanna stay on the lower end of the lap number races. So this just pushed me, I said before, I'm gonna go between like a three and seven lap. Now I'm thinking more between like three and five is gonna be the sweet spot for this racer because it's not long enough where the deterioration is really gonna heavily impact. Um, predator and prey is going to be really in regards to passing. This is maybe going to be less influential for the races that you enter, but you also want to look at this in regards to who you're racing against. If you're racing against a bunch of people that have very weak predator, then, you know, predator is how well you pass someone. Prey is how well you block someone. So while I'm not really using this necessarily to choose the races, this is just a trait to keep in mind when you're looking at who you're racing against and to see where your traits fall against theirs. Now, lastly is speed. It's pretty self-explanatory. How fast are you on these sector times, on these lap times? My speed is dominant, okay? Not everybody has a dominant speed, and that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be able to be competitive in racers because you're taking really into account the consistency and deterioration when you're looking at the lap numbers. So my speed is very strong here. That means that even though my deterioration is weak, my, um, my consistency is mid-tier, I still really feel like I have a strong chance. And like I said, I'm looking for races between like three and five laps as a sweet spot for this racer. Now, these traits are all very specific for your NFT. They do come from the creator clones. Like real genetics, we take recessive dominant traits and we combine them. So this is how you can use your traits and your properties to better understand maybe NFTs that you want to invest in, you want to borrow once Sprint GP has a lending program in place. And once you have your racer, what races you want to be racing in. Now, thank you for joining. That is all for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop in on the Sprint GP Discord. Find us on Twitter, on Instagram. We're working on building this community strong so that you have the support you need to be successful in this racing environment. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next week.